I knew that Todd Williams and Billy Tsien did amazing architecture. They love light. I have a terrific amount of trust in their judgment. I have a terrific amount of trust in their talent. So I was thrilled to be a part of what they were doing. A sculpture by Ursula von Reidingsvard is completing the new Anlinger Center for Energy and the Environment at Princeton University. The center is designed by Todd Williams Billy TN Architects, known for their philosophy of making places on the earth that give a sense of grace to life. I feel very lucky to be with or that close to their buildings and to have worked with them. We considered several artists really to arrive at a sense of who was best suited to make something for this. Todd and Billy sat in on a couple of the preliminary conversations and it was fascinating to see just the ease of communication between them. There is a kind of shared vocabulary. I think Ursula von Reidingsvart is one of the most important sculptors alive today. The fact that Ursula then has so stretched herself <laughs> to work in a medium that is wholly new for her at this monumental scale is, for someone who does what I do, just remarkably rewarding. The sculpture is 18 and a half feet tall and entirely hand wrought out of copper, a first for the artist. I just think a lot of things fell together and probably the most important is that I met Richard Weber right before I did the presentation to the group of people at Princeton. Richard Weber works with metals of all kinds, skills developed over 35 years creating dinosaurs and other displays at the Museum of Natural History in New York, but this was a new kind of challenge. So we went over to the studio for a visit and when we went over there, I didn't realize at the time before I went the scale that Ursula was thinking in terms of. <laughs> it's a good thing you didn't realize. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I mean, I, I, didn't realize I don't know what I expected, but I didn't expect something quite so grand. But that's great. That's why we're doing it. Richard knew of a studio space in Brooklyn. They call it the Cathedral. And for more than two years, he worked with a team of assistants as the piece destined for Princeton's campus slowly took shape. Ursula von Reidingsvard makes large, often monumental works. She began working in cedar in the late 1970s and continues to use this wood as the point of departure for all of her art. She needs to physically feel her way through the process and one board leads to another board leads to another board and another mark and another mark and another cut and another cut so that it's very organic and intuitive as the work is growing. And if she's looking for something that has like a more cut in shape or a more rounded or a more tufted shape, those decisions are being made on the spot in the moment that the sculpture is being built. The piece that is at Barclays Center, which is cast in bronze, was cast from a full-scale wood piece. So there was no imagining, I'll make a big bronze, I'll just give you a little model, like you'll see Henry Moore made these maquettes from which the large work would be made. She doesn't do that. Everything is made one piece at a time and similarly done piece to piece, whether it's a wall relief or a large bowl. It starts at the ground and builds up. This is a sculpture that I uh, submitted full scale, as you see here, to the foundry to cast in bronze. Uh, and where you see the white makes a different kind of surface than what surrounds it, than the cedar surface, that it registered in the lost wax process uh, fabricated piece and uh, we were able to cut into it openings so that not only air could go through, but light could go through. So this piece is called Bent Lace, and it's at the uh, Sculpture Garden at MoMA now. Making a piece in copper is an entirely different process, with each segment hand hammered and then mounted onto an armature. It's like a puzzle that starts with patterns made from the original cedar piece. We have 3,277 patterns. All those patterns first are made in paper, 
you know. We generated the paper off the model, full-scale model that Ursula made for us to work from. So a paper pattern like this is generated from the face of one of Ursula's pieces. We put it over top of the section and get our, our pattern like this. Now what's critical to our whole system is our coding system. Because uh, right now, uh, Ursula just picked this up arbitrarily, but I can tell you exactly where it is in these 3,270 pieces. I know exactly where this goes. This is T13, it's side 3A, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, row 10, it's on the left center, and it's the bottom piece. So how high up would this piece be? This is tier 13, so it's on the top there. It's up, it's up approximately 18 and a half feet, okay? So, once... And I can't tell you how happy we are that we are on the last <laughs> tier. Yeah, yeah we're, all, we're all pretty excited about that, <laughs> for sure. And then there's the patina. Copper really has its own mind. You know, there are ways in which you can't possibly predict as to what it's going to give you. So uh, I think that's, that's one of the most exciting yeah, parts. Yeah, exactly. Right? No, it's not, it's not. And it all comes out of itself, its own body, which, you know, is, is like, 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 like a miracle. Look at, look at this. Ursula makes art that is labor intensive, but that's the beauty too, found in the time and effort it takes to make things especially very large, technically demanding things, by hand, working closely with others. You're really putting your sweat, like your literal sweat, and like blood into this, you know? Yeah, like some of my sections over there, I just kind of, it's kind of like children almost, you know? It's <laughs> just like, oh, like I made you, <laughs> kind of thing. But, you know, ultimately, you know, that's all for like a bigger, like project and a bigger kind of scope, you know? So you always have that in mind, but I think what I really like about Ursula is that she appreciates that you can see everyone's kind of styles and hands in the work and I think that's really what's appealing about this kind of work is that you're kind of trusted to interpret her like model. There are cues for me that pieces that not only had you know, the hard work, because that's simply what my ideas require. That's the process by which they get executed. That's the process by which you see them through to the finish, is the hard work. But that, but that there was a buzz, you know, in the studio. There was an excitement in the studio. And it usually was a piece that was, you know, that was the likes of which we've never done. Ursula and I were talking the other day about the challenge in this technologically <laughs> motivated world to get everyone to look up, you know, to get to, to look up from the ground or, or the, the tools that we're holding in our hands as we walk down the street. And that too, I think, is something that we want both for architecture and art on this campus, is to help everyone look up and be arrested by the surroundings they find themselves in. In time, it changes into something that the Statue of Liberty has had for many years. It's a white green. So it will have, hopefully, you know, an interesting surface that varies all of its life. And I think during seasons, during the winter, it'll look different than the summer. It'll be interesting, I think, for the people that are coming in to see it change over the years. The New Jersey State Council on the Arts, encouraging excellence and public engagement in the arts since 1966, is proud to co-produce State of the Arts with Stockton University, New Jersey's distinctive public university.